All right. So our first directions here, right, are to draw the image of triangle ABC after the given combination of transformations. All right. So it says here that we're going to do a reflection over line L, then translation along vector V. Okay. We actually don't have to do this one. It's already been done for us. All right. If we look down here, we see that we reflect triangle ABC over line L. Okay. So there's this reflection. By the way, the way this thing's being reflected, we really can't count it. The only way that we have to reflect with this kind of diagonal line like this, you, you might be able to eyeball it. Some of you guys might be able to look at it and just eyeball it, but what other option do we have to reflect over to this side besides eyeballing it? What else can we use? Ideas? To reflect that triangle ABC there, what other things could we use to re do a reflection? This is the one I wasn't here for, so if you don't remember, well, this one I taught you in my video lesson. All right, so mirrors are an option, right? You can put the mirror down on the line of reflection and then reflect your shape that way, okay? Or if that bothers your eye too much, patty paper, right? To do the patty paper tran or, ro or reflection, I'll say, you take you know your piece of patty paper here and you just trace down the line of reflection. I like to put dots at the end points too. I know there, there are arrows there, it's supposed to be a line, but the dots are helpful to um, make sure I get it placed on correctly. And then I like to sketch the line of reflection on there too. And then we just plot the points, A, B, and C. And then if you flip your paper over, we wouldn't have a lot of points there, but there it is. Okay, and let line back up the dots at the end of the arrows. There's A prime, B prime, and C prime. And you can just trace on the backs of those, and then they trace back onto your paper to give you A, B, A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay. And then once you have those, we're going to translate using the vector. Okay. Now, let's see here. So, um, Lindsay, this vector, what is this vector telling us to do with this A prime, B prime, C prime? Which direction specifically are we supposed to go there? Right. Okay, right. How much? Four. Four, and then, is that it? Right, right, for up one. And you can see over here, they've done that for us, right? From C prime to C prime prime, they went right, one, two, three, four, and up one. Okay, or you can do up one and then write one, two, three, four. Still the same point, right? So there you go. Okay. Any questions on any of that? All right, so what if we switch the order, though? What if instead of doing reflection over line L and then a translation along vector V, what if we instead did a translation along vector V and then a reflection Okay, what do you think about that? Well maybe why don't you guys go ahead and give that a shot right here and that little space, see if we end up with getting the same, in the same position there as A prime prime, B prime prime, C prime prime, okay? Think about it ahead of time and, you know, will it be the same thing? Is it kind of like doing two plus three is the same thing as three plus two? In other words, is it commutative? Okay, believe it or not, yes, transformations can be commutative. We'll see if this particular combination is commutative. It's the same forwards as backwards, basically. So give it a shot and tell me what you think. I'll do it real quick here, too. And I realize it might not fit on there, so... Well, so... I'm, we already know what the reflection and then translation one looks like. It's the bottom right one, which you see there. So I want you to try the, just the reverse. Okay, translate, then reflect, and see if you end up with the same thing. And if you want to use a mirror, you can feel free to go up and grab a mirror for the reflection, too, if you'd prefer that. I'm going to use a mirror. I think they're a little bit easier myself.
maybe not. <clears throat> one more minute here and then we'll, we'll call on somebody to get an answer here All right, so let's see here. Maria, what do you say? Is it, does it end up being the same thing? No, yeah, not really, right? So here's what I got, okay? It doesn't even end up being on grid points, right? It doesn't even end up being on, like, grid points, really. And so then, clearly, this is not in the same position as the other one down here, right? This one, at least we can tell for sure, the line of reflection goes through our triangle here, but here... The triangle, the triangle here doesn't have the line of reflection going through it, so it won't go through its image either, for sure there, okay? So, it's not the same thing. So be careful, make sure you're doing things in the right order. There are some transformations whose order won't matter, okay? Um, but, in this case, it's no good. You have, to, you have to make sure you keep the right order there, okay? So let's try another one here. Let's take a look at this one here on page 117 has us do a rotation around point P, then a translation along a vector, and then a reflection across line L. You're like, wow. It's a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a shot. All right, so to do rotations, and part of the reason why we're doing this too is just for some review kind of to make sure we remember how to do our different uh, transformations. So to do a rotation here, you're going to take your paper, right, okay, and we are going to, first of all, we need to connect our center of rotation, right, to one of the vertices on our triangle. So I'm going to pick the closest one. I'm going to pick uh, point C, right there. Okay, I'm going to draw in points for A and B as well. Why not? Because they're there. Okay, so I'm going to draw, let's see if I have my black one. No, oh, yes, yeah, no. Okay, so connect P and C like so. It's kind of hard to see there, but I did connect it. Okay, and then on your patty paper, we're going to copy that. Okay, so again, I don't know if like, this stuff doesn't scratch out as nice as the other patty paper does. I'm going to try and have some like, better patty paper for us tomorrow. I can, I'm going to get a hold of parchment paper, which I think we'll be able to write on that a lot easier, and it'll still be transparent, or at least translucent. Okay. Anyway, to do this, you're going to recopy all your points here. And then don't forget to also do that little segment from P to C. So it should look something like this. Okay. If you want to name the point, it's not a bad idea. So you can call this A, B, and C. Okay, it's kind of messy. Now, some of us know, right, if we have a 180-degree rotation, 
And since we're along this line here, it's pretty obvious that we need to rotate to something like this, right? But say we had a different rotation, right? You'd want to use a protractor here and actually measure it out. Actually, I don't want to use this protractor, but that's the only one that I've got. Okay. And so if we measure 180, okay, counting from the zero there, all around here to the 180. I'll go ahead and draw that, but it's it's like obvious. It's like dumb. It's with minus a straight line there. It's going to be 180 degrees that way. Okay. So we've drawn our 100, 180 degree angle, and we're just going to take this shape and then rotate it about point P, 180 degrees, till my little segment lines up with the other side of my angle. Boom, right there. Okay, and then you're just going to copy those points down and they transferred for me which is cool and then there's our rotated shape okay. now let's see we'll call this point C prime down there this will be A prime and this will be B prime Okay. So any questions on the rotation there? We definitely want to make sure we can do rotations, right, for our um, test coming up on Wednesday. We're going to have a test Wednesday, okay? We'll have a review day tomorrow, and then we'll do test Wednesday. So, all right. All right, so Hunter, what's the next thing we have to do? After the rotation, what's the next thing we're supposed to do? Uh, let's uh, translate it. Okay, so how should we translate it? It says using vector V, right, but what does that mean? What are we going to do here for this one? Uh, I think it's right five. Let me count here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Should be five and then up one. That's right. So each one of these points then, triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime, right? Right five and up one. So there's B prime. Or B prime prime, I should say. A prime is right one, two, up one. And then... like so. Okay, so there it is, translated. Notice point P stays where it is, right? Point P is not part of our actual figure. It's only there for the rotation. We don't need to translate it as well. So point P stays put. All right, and then Elizabeth, what's the last thing we have to do here? Reflect. Now, do I need to use patty paper when my line of reflection is drawn like this? What can we do instead? Exactly. So if C prime prime is one point above, that means C prime 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 will be one point below. That's right. So there's C prime prime prime. Okay. B prime prime is one, two, three, four above. So one, two, three, four below is B prime prime prime. And finally, A prime prime is three above. So one, two, three below, A prime prime prime. like so, and there's the final answer. Okay. So let's see, are the images you drew, we're looking at number four here, are the images that you drew for each example the same size and shape as the given pre-image? All right, what do you say there, Melissa? Yes, right, okay, so in what ways do rigid transformations change the pre-image? Right. Exactly. So if we're talking, in what ways do a rigid transformation change the pre-image? Well, rigid transformations don't change the preeminence. You're exactly right. The only thing that might kind of change, you might kind of say, is that like the orientation changes, right? So for example, you know, here it's kind of, it looks kind of one direction, but then it has to rotate to then kind of change it. But still the same size, still the same shape, okay? And the points are still in the same order. It's just kind of 
moved around some, that's all. So yeah, that's kind of a silly question maybe, but um, does the order in which you apply the transformations make a difference? We know the answer is most likely yes, right? Okay, for this one I would imagine it is true as well. It says for us to go and back and do part B in a different order, but that would be a hassle because we already have it drawn all over our paper there. Um, and so yeah, and we won't, I won't worry about making you guys then go backwards. But I mean, if we want to describe a sequence of transformations that will take triangle A prime prime, B prime prime, C prime prime back to the pre-image, what's one easy way to go back basically? What, what would we start with? If we want to take this back to this, what could we do? First thing we should do is what? Reflect it back over line L and then go which direction? We can translate it where? Anybody? Am I, have I lost you? Let's see here. Tanner, what do you say? Once I, once, if I reflect this back, again, my goal is to get back to here. If I reflect it back up here, now what should I do? Translation down one. Yeah, translation down one, oh. down one, left five. We get to there. And then last one, Tanner, what should we do? Yeah, back about point P. Exactly right. We just undo all the things that we did. Now, is there other ways to get back to there? Sure. Okay, that's an easy way to do it. All right. All right, I'm going to hold off on having you guys do any of these just because I feel like I want to move on and get the last bit here done, okay, which is looking at non-rigid transformations and combining those, okay? So, for example, here, you can see this one. They take this... Um, this quadrilateral, which by the way, does anyone know what the name of this special quadrilateral is? It does have a name, A, B, C, D here. No idea. We have one pair of parallel sides. We'll learn it in the quadrilaterals unit. No need to worry. Okay, I'll just save it for that then. So anyway, um, what's that? It's a trapezoid, exactly right. That's right. That's right. It's a trapezoid. It's a trapezoid. One pair of parallel sides. Okay. Um, so anyway, if you see here, we have some coordinate notation. So it takes the original A, B, C, D, and then it does this three halves and three halves, and we end up with this. Okay. What kind of transformation is that? What we call what we call that? What kind of transformation is that? What happened there? Um, Julie, what do you say? What kind of transfer to go from A, B, C, D to A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime? What would we call that kind of transformation? Maybe it's not a slide, is it? Because because no, notice how the, the size change dilation exactly right. It is a dilation. Yep, it's dilation with a scale factor of three halves. So we multiply both the x coordinates and the y coordinates by three halves. So yeah, it's 1.5 or three halves times bigger. Mm-hmm. That's right. And then let's see, the negative xy, that took this and then reflected it, right? And then it translated some, okay? So this little dilation right here changed the size of our trapezoid, so it's no longer now um, a rigid, rigid motion, right? They're no longer the same from that dilation there. All right, so let's try this one here for letter B, okay? Now, my recommendation to you guys, when you're going to do a problem like this, right, since we're now talking coordinates, like a coordinate notation, my recommendation is to actually like do the math for the coordinates. So for example, like take the time to actually write out some work here. So I'm going to kind of show you an example of what I mean by that. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite the transformation in coordinate notation down here. And then I'm actually going to do that with all three of the vertices of my triangle right here. Okay? So, for example, let's see here. What are the um, coordinates um, of A here, uh, Mason? What, do you, what are the coordinates for point A? Um, zero, negative yep, looks good. Zero, negative two, good. And how about uh, point B, Mason? Sorry, just, just regular point B, regular point B. Yeah, negative 2, negative 4, thank you, yes, sorry, we'll, we'll get to that. And then how about the original point C? Negative 4, negative 4. There you go, yeah, negative 4, negative 4, thank you. Okay, that's right. Okay. 
And so then we're supposed to take these three points, and the first transformation we're supposed to do is do three times x coordinate, but leave the y coordinate alone. Okay? So let's see here. And actually, I'm going to go, well, that one's already plotted. So let's go to, let's see. So Evan, oh, you're, you're away. Never mind. I'll go, I'll call on somebody else. You get a pass this time. Drew, what would A prime be then here? Okay, so right, three times zero is still zero, and then negative two stays for the y. What about b prime? Um, negative, six, negative, negative six, negative four, good. And c prime? Um, negative, or negative 12, negative four. 12, negative four. Okay, and believe it or not, this will actually fit on our graph. So let's go ahead and plot this. So it's zero, negative two. So a prime stays the same. Negative six, negative four. B prime changes pretty significantly though, and then C prime is negative 12, negative 4. Okay, we end up with this crazy skinny triangle here. So I know we're supposed to continue on here, but let's pause real quick and look at this. And could someone maybe try and describe what is, what's going on here? What happened to our original triangle? What, what could we, how can we maybe describe this? What could we say here? Any ideas on that? What could we say? Is this a dilation? Will we, will we call this a dilation? Okay, yes? Yeah. You think so? Zishan thinks, mm. Okay. Do you want to say no, Zishan? No, I'll say no. I'm not, sure. not sure why? Okay. So this, this, yeah. Yeah, Marie? yeah Correct. Like right. Remember, though, right, just because, so we got to be careful. The word dilation doesn't, doesn't like, mm. there are non-rigid transformations that aren't dilations, for example, right? Now, this does kind of follow a dilation in that it does stretch, right? It stretches the shape. How does it stretch the shape? Yeah. Right, so I would call this one what kind of stretch? A horizontal stretch, right? Now, a dilation, Maria, would be an, an atom it would stretch both vertically and horizontally the same amount. So for example, what we saw up here for letter A, that is a dilation because both the x and y coordinates were being multiplied by three halves. Here though, since only the x coordinates being multiplied by three, we don't call that a dilation, only the x coordinates being affected. So that's like a horizontal stretch. See, it stretches, it takes the triangle and stretches it out, okay? Kind of like a piece of silly putty or something like that. But yeah, that, that's the idea. And we're not going to, like, so Stephanie, we're not going to get into, like, a whole other section about, like, horizontal stretches, vertical stretches, and all those things. But that, that is what's going on here. This is just part of the whole non-rigid transformations thing, okay? All right, and the last piece here, Melissa. So let's go to the A prime primes. So, yeah, so 1 half times 0 is still 0. Negative 1 half times a negative 2, though, becomes positive 1. Okay, what about B prime prime? I got negative three. Two. Negative three, good. Yet yeah, one half of negative six is negative three, and then w negative one half times negative four is positive two. And what about C prime prime? Negative, negative six, positive two. Okay, looks good to me. So we'll plot that. So let's see here. So zero, one. There's A prime prime. Negative three, two. B prime prime, and negative six. C prime prime. Okay, even skinnier triangle there. Okay. So again, uh, my recommendation is to do this work here. When you see problems like this, is to do this work out so that way you can kind of see exactly what happens, okay? Or, you know, it's easier to kind of plot those points. It's kind of hard to, like, mental math, you know, all these steps at once. 
You know, you might be able to do it, but it's a lot to keep up in your head. I suggest writing it out and actually showing your work there. Okay. So yeah. All right. I'm also going to skip the next two for the, the your turns there, just because these take so long. And what I'd rather do is actually just give you guys a chance to get started on your homework, okay? Because these take some time, and I don't want to have you do in a you know a bajillion problems tonight. So, if you would turn to page 122 and 123, I'll give you your assignment so you can get started on that here in class. Okay. And so here's what I would like uh, for you to do, okay? On page 122, I would like you to do these three. Numbers one, two, and three. So you can just circle those if you like. Okay, so one, two, and three. All right, everyone got that? And then on page 123, I want you to do just number five. Okay. And then on the back of 123, I want you to do all, 124, okay? Which it's more like, just like kind of logic stuff and answering questions. It's not a whole lot of actual transformations. So I didn't feel too bad giving you those. Okay. It was just number five on the second page there, Elizabeth. Okie doke. So go ahead and get started on that. And I'll kind of come around and help as necessary.